Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A while ago, I made a video about using my iPad with bias effects on it to replace my amp for rehearsal purposes. And I said I had a gig coming up, so I'd make an updated video of my experience using that same setup in a live situation. And basically this is that video. But if you've missed the previous one, uh, go over here and check it out. Before we get into the video, I'd just like to say that the channel has reached 100 subscribers, which for me is a pretty big milestone. I've had three YouTube channels over the years and all of them <laughs> have been a serious struggle. And this is the first one that has reached 100 subscribers. And for me, that's really, really cool. So thanks to everyone who has subscribed. So if you've seen my last video, the main takeaways are the fact that, you know, my app was really heavy to carry around. It's much easier to just carry around an iPad with an audio interface uh, for, for, for rehearsals and even gigs, right? The points I made in favor of the iPad is the fact that the tone, well, it's on the iPad really, but more like bias effects or any other SIM that's available for, for a small, device. The tone is good enough because, you know, in, in the kind of venues that I play, if you play stadiums, go ahead with an amp. Um, but, you know, the kind of venues that I'd play, my band would play at small pubs or clubs. The bass frequencies dominate the entire frequency space. And, uh, you know, there's no point being a connoisseur with your sound in, in live environments like that. And even if you were, I mean, Bias FX produces some decent tones and it has enough flexibility and effects and you know, just basically it has everything I need to achieve the sound that I want. Now, the other thing that I mentioned about it was the stability. I said it was great. I hadn't had a single hiccup with it. And that is still true, right? I've had a bunch more rehearsals. I've played my first gig with it. I just had an XLR cable go out of the interface into the front of house and everything was perfectly fine. No hiccups whatsoever setting it up or playing it. Now, getting to the meat and potatoes of the video, there were a couple of things that needed some tweaking, right? So let me just clear the space over here because this is now what I have to have with me at, uh, you know, going anywhere for live performance or even a rehearsal. So this is a small pedal board, you know, by Pedal Train, which is honestly a great brand. Um, not affiliated with the mobile scene anyway, but you pay a bit of a premium for their stuff. But the quality, I mean, the zippers, the bag, everything, the quality is just singing. <laughs> so, excuse me for a bit of noise here. So I got this little pedal board, right? And if you remember, that's the rig. I mean, it got the interface, the X-Tone, X-Sonic. I got my wireless receiver here and transmitter. Um, so that's kind of great to play wireless. Obviously you can remove this if you don't want to play wireless, but I just really like the freedom and not worrying about stepping or tripping over cables or anything like that, uh, as well as being able to move around the stage. And this is the thing, right? I mean, there's a tuner now. So the downside with the iPad and using bias is the fact that it's not easy to engage the tuner, right? You kind of has to have to use the, you know, the touch screen to initiate it. You can't really, it's, it's not an effect that you can put, as far as I know at least, into your signal chain and switch it using, uh, using MIDI. So basically I've had to add a tuner, right, into my rig of already two things that, you know, I would have preferred already to be kind of bunched up together and not just laying around but now I have three things, which means really I need a pedal board. And so that's what I got. And of course, along with this, you know, I need some cables. I need an XLR cable, although at the venue, at the live venue, they had an XLR cable, so I didn't need it. But I'd always have an XLR cable, a spare guitar cable, another instrument cable in case I need to plug into the effects return of an amp, in case I can't plug into front of house for any reason, you know, spare patch cables. It's all small things, but I need to have these things. I need to have my receiver charged. I need to make sure that the battery um, in, in the tuner is not dead because I'm not plugging any of this into anything. Everything runs on battery uh, or off of the iPad power. So that's a lot of things to think about on top of the fact that, you know, this case, I, I mean, it weighs almost as much as the pedal board, maybe a bit less, but still like it, it's, it's, it's pretty bulky for what it is. And because there's a bunch of cables in it, you know, all the things that I mentioned plus spares, uh, it, do, it does weigh quite a bit with this in it. It's kind of bulky. Add the iPad, which, you know, needs to go into some kind of case itself, right? So basically I got like a little backpack for this whole setup. So now I'm carrying this backpack and this backpack pretty much contains, you know, plus cables, but my way to achieve sound where, you know, if you, if you compare it to any other um, alternative, you know, you're comparing this to a floor sim, right? Which is basically a unit about this size, maybe a bit taller and narrower or whatever, you know, whichever one you choose. Um, 
that probably produces, you know, it's a specialized unit, it probably produces better sounds. Um, it, it's definitely a lot more robust. It's only one unit. You don't need cabling between it. You don't need batteries in multiple different components and to worry about that. You don't need multiple cables. So for here, for example, I need a cable running to my iPad. I need to make sure my iPad is charged. I need to make sure my iPad is not like, you know, who knows what might happen to my iPad, right? Um, if it's not operational, then I can't run the whole thing. If any of these components are not operational, I cannot run the whole thing. If any of the connections between the components are not operational, any batteries, you get the point. Um, so while this setup does work, and it's, it's great the fact that we can do something like this, you may not need the tuner. I mean, I have the tuner. It's maybe a little bit of paranoia, really, to be honest with my guitar. I can tune before the show, and I can, I'll stay in tune for the six songs that we have. We'll later expand it to nine. I'm pretty sure we'll stay in tune for all those songs. You know, you can, you can strip this down, and if you're not using the wireless as well, you know, you can just have the interface, which would be great. But still, you have the, you know, the two components with the iPad and the cable between them, right, which is a USB cable. Just think about that. You know, it's not like an XLR jack is very robust, but a USB jack is not robust on either end, right? It can easily be pulled out. It can easily be snapped. So those are just my thoughts, right? And if you went for the alternative of going with a floor sim unit, you wouldn't need to worry about these things. You only need the cable running in and the cable running out, perhaps power. You know, most of them will run on batteries. I think that's a much more robust, simple solution. You have to worry a lot less, right? And you can just carry it probably in one case rather than putting a case in a backpack and then other things and then... So yeah, I didn't want this to be a long video. I just wanted to say that, you know, if you, if you already have an iPad or an iOS device, it can run on iPhone as well or lower end iPads or you need an iPad for something else, then this could make sense for you. Um, of course, provided the fact that you don't want to spend money on both the iPad and a floor sim unit. But, you know, if you're just looking for a way to create sound and you have an X amount of budget, I think a floor sim unit will be a better spend any time of the day, right? I again, not considering the benefit of having the iPad, you know, being able to watch stuff, play things, play games, uh, do productivity work and stuff like that, right? So that's basically my two cents. And I think sometime in the future, I will probably get myself a floor sim unit rather than having to you know, deal with all these uncertainties and worries about batteries and components, basically number of components. So anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you tonight. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. You know, I've joined a band during lockdown and we've gone to the studio, recorded our first songs. And I plan to make videos about all that stuff and how it went in my experience and just to share with anyone who's interested. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please do subscribe and stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.